Hello Augies Worldwide. Are you an Augie? If you subscribe to this channel, you are. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode 178 of Ham Radio Answers. Our topic for the day is the American Radio Relay League, or ARRL. This is the only United States organization with national scope that is devoted to amateurs and amateur radio. But before we start, a quick word from our sponsor, LCSC.com. LCSC Electronics is now a sponsor of this channel. LCSC Electronics is an international distributor of electronics parts and is a circuit board manufacturer. Please check out their websites at lcsc.com and ezeda.com. Now, before I talk about the league, let me point out I've been a member for over 40 years. I've often said that new hams should join the ARRL immediately, and I stand by that recommendation. The ARRL did not ask me to make this video. I strongly believe that the League is worthy of our support. I also again claim that you'll get more than your money's worth in benefits for joining the League. The ARRL is the only U.S. organization with national scope that is devoted to amateurs and amateur radio. Its mission is to advance the art, science, and enjoyment of amateur radio. It was organized in 1914 by Hiram Percy Maxim and Clarence D. Tuska, both of Hartford, Connecticut. The original purpose was to organize the relay of traffic, meaning messages, in a spark environment. In those early days of radio, even the most powerful amateur spark gap stations could transmit only a few hundred miles, and most amateurs far less. The word relay remains in the name of the League. Over the years, the League has accumulated missions. It added the mission of improving the state of the art among amateurs and was one of the organizations that fought to pry radio loose from the Navy at the end of World War I. Since then, the ARRL has led in many areas, including the move from Spark to CW and technical investigations of many innovations, such as new antennas. The amateur community provided the backbone of the military's communications capability in World War II because hams already knew Morse code and understood radio. Later, the League helped popularize single sideband. In more modern times, the League was a big pusher for volunteer examiners and a no-code tech license. It's currently working to create some more meaningful HF privileges for techs as an incentive to stay active in ham radio. Now, I will acknowledge that not all has been sweetness and light over the years. Some prominent hams have picked fights with the ARRL, and there is still a lingering resentment among some. Back when ham radio was a big enough business to support several magazines, critics used to say that the ARRL was just a publishing house and no more. Well, it certainly is a publishing house, but it is much more. The ARRL is oft accused of arrogance for the simple reason that it takes stands on matters. And if the stand it takes is different from yours, it's easy to feel they're out of touch. There is a very recent controversy about the ARRL board censuring one of its members. The outcry resulted in quick backtracking, thank goodness. Overall, as the ham radio publication business has slowed, there seems to be a general consensus that has toned down criticism of the League, with some cases of cooperation where heretofore there had only been confrontation. It should be noted that throughout its history, the League has often operated without making reference to critics, but even that has softened of late. The hundred-year-old League stands today as vibrant as ever. 
There is one major item in the ARRL's history where its acceptance among hams hit a speed bump. In the 1960s, the League and the FCC created incentive licensing. In this proposal, each higher class of license got more HF privileges. To do this, about half of the general class license HF single sideband privileges were taken away for redistribution. Many general class hams resented losing half their privileges and having to test for an advanced class ticket or to get the most primo DX frequencies to amateur extra class, all just to regain what they had before. This resulted in tons of ill will toward the league 50 years ago now. After a few years of scorching criticism, the league has promised from then on that no subsequent restructuring proposal will result in loss of privileges for any ham. If you scratch the surface of anyone who was an active ham for over 50 years, you'll find that those strong opinions may still resurface. Now, let's turn from history to the present and talk about the benefits of joining the ARRL. Keep in mind, it's not inexpensive at $49 a year. That's about the cost of a decent Chinese handheld. First and most visible among the benefits are the periodicals. The flagship magazine is QST, and this alone nearly justifies the annual membership fee. Published monthly in both hard copy and digital form, this general interest, entirely ham radio oriented magazine is full of articles, reviews, columns, projects, and responses to reader queries. Articles address every level of technical expertise. Members have free access to all QSTs ever published, all the way back to number one, and they're all indexed and electronically searchable. The League also publishes a number of free email newsletters. Some things are available at an extra subscription fee, such as the highly technical QEX magazine designed for experimenters and scientists. The League also provides a weekly podcast sponsored by DX Engineering called The Doctor Is In that addresses technical questions from members. The League runs and pays for Logbook of the World, or LOTW, a secure way of matching your logbook to those whom you have contacted. The ARRL also sponsors quite a number of awards, such as the DX Century Club, Work All States, and so on, and all these can be linked to Logbook of the World. In addition, the League sponsors the legacy paper QSL Outgoing Bureau, sending QSLs from our DX contacts toward the right country, and coordinates the incoming QSL bureaus at call district level across the United States. The League is Amateur Radio's collective voice for lobbying Congress. Right now, such efforts are closely focused on the Amateur Radio Parity Act, currently before Congress, which will address issues hams find with their homeowners associations who have antenna restrictions. The League is also working with the FCC to define more HF privileges for technicians and to straighten out the mess caused by the FCC's claim that hams cannot use radios that are capable of transmitting out of band. The League regularly advocates for or against proposed regulatory changes. The FCC is a huge and busy organization, and amateur radio is not one of its priorities. The League keeps issues of importance to us in front of the FCC, pushing them to resolution. In the enforcement arena, the League is working out a method to act as the ears of the FCC to help rid our ham bands of persistent bad actors. The League partners with disaster relief organizations such as the American Red Cross, working out protocols for how hams can help the Red Cross in disaster relief. In addition, the ARRL sponsors the Amateur Radio Emergency Service, or ARES, which partners with local served agencies, such as police and fire, for disaster response. 
This, by the way, is a great way for a newly licensed technician ham to get involved in public service. The League is deeply involved in education. This includes licensing, public service, the Technical Information Service, emergency preparedness. They provide educational material for teachers. The League's online store offers a vast variety of books, some written by ARRL staffers, some by experts in the field, and the League also offers the Radio Society of Great Britain's catalog. The League has an extensive field organization, and there's an ARRL elected representative near you. Here in Colorado, the section manager is an old friend of mine, Jack Chihacha, WM0G, in the Denver area. As you gain experience, you may want to become part of this. The ARRL supports ham radio clubs across the nation, and ARRL affiliated clubs receive a number of benefits, including the availability of liability insurance. The ARRL section managers are available to support clubs, help train leadership, point them to programs they can present, and so on. The League's own club station is the W1AW Hiram Percy Maxim Memorial Station at headquarters in Newington, Connecticut, just outside Hartford. It broadcasts code practice and news bulletins and is available for members to operate at set times during the day. I've had the privilege of a Cook's tour of the station. It's an amazing building filled with history. The ARRL is by far the largest of the Volunteer Examiner Coordinators, or VECs. I point out in passing that I'm an ARRL Volunteer Examiner and have participated in over 50 test sessions. The League processes all the materials from exam sessions and feeds the results to the FCC all pre-digested so the FCC can issue call signs. The League funds several scholarships for young hands. The League runs several large-scale contests and operating events every year. The biggest of these is the ARRL Field Day, held on the last full weekend in June. Stations can be fielded by individual hams, informal groups, or, very often, by local clubs. Our Montrose Amateur Radio Club always puts in a big effort for Field Day. The ARRL also sponsors several other contests during the year, and offers a monthly contest calendar that also lists contests sponsored by other organizations. The League operates an email forwarding service. For example, you can have an email address of your call sign at ARRL.net, which will forward to your email address of choice. The League also offers individual ham radio equipment insurance plans and an ARRL Visa card. The League website, ARRL.org, is a gold mine of information both on current events and technical information. The site is huge. One of the favorite things members can look up on the website are equipment reviews sorted several different ways, and members can examine the QST archive going back nearly 100 years. So let's look at the state of the ARRL today. Keep this in mind against a backdrop of the total number of hams, about 748,000 as of the beginning of 2018. The League's annual reports are online. The most recent is for 2017. League membership is 159,000. I'm going to venture a guess that maybe 75 to 80 percent of League members are active hams. Of all hams nationwide, on the other hand, I think no more than 20 percent and probably fewer are active on the air hams. Anyway, QST claimed circulation on the League's 2017 IRS Form 990 is 144K, but Postal Service Form 3526 shows paid circulation of 99K hard copies, those that actually went through the mail, 
as of October 2018, with a net press run of 141,000. Note that circulation will be lower than membership numbers because associate members, like my wife, don't get their own copy of QST, it's one per family. I'm not sure all these numbers reconcile, but I'm sure someone is keeping track of them. The League has an operating budget on the order of $14 million a year. The salaries paid to League staffers are commensurate with responsibilities. These salaries can be found in ARRL tax filings, all on the ARRL website. At anything below the national level, people volunteer their time. QST has to address the new ham as well as keep the interest of the old timer. They've been asking for article submissions of late. Becky Schoenfeld, W1BXY, asked me to create an article from one of my videos. This was published in the August 2018 issue in page 64 called Decoding Symbolism in the FCC Seal. I just sent her another article based on the Amateur Extra License Manual on Radio Math. If you have a cool article you'd like considered for QST, send the completed article to Becky. Okay, so, bottom line. Should you join the League? Yes. Absolutely yes. It's doing great work and you should be part of it. And you get QST Plus newsletters, amazingly educational. There's a gold mine of information on the website for members. The ARRL represents you to the FCC and Congress. Very likely your local club is ARRL affiliated and such clubs need at least 50% of their members to be league members. So, absolutely, the League is worth the $49 a year annual dues. Be part of it. Don't let the rumor mill be your source of your ham radio info. Just QST alone is worth the membership. Thanks for all your support, suggestions, and ideas. Please like and share this video. Please subscribe and also click the bell so you'll get email notification of all new videos. I like to distribute knowledge widely and my videos are free for the viewing on YouTube. LCSC.com is now providing a small sponsorship to this channel adding to what patrons are providing via patreon.com and to the tip jar at ke0og.net slash tip hyphen jar. All is most gratefully acknowledged and appreciated. Until we next meet, 73.